Welcome to Gravity Lab, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, welcome. Good evening. My name is Sam Nadelli, um, and this is Gravity Live. This is our first ever edition of Gravity Live. Give a shout out to just being making history right now. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, for those of you who are not familiar with what Gravity is, Gravity is an organization that focuses on providing a space and um, resources for entrepreneurs of color who are trying to break into the tech industry. Um, and tonight we have Darren Levine from Asdale. He's the founder and CEO of Asdale. And we're gonna learn a little bit about his story, his journey, and how his company is getting ready to launch their newest software called Grit. So um, really I wanna just go ahead and dive in, but before I do that, I wanna give a couple shout outs. Um, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsors. As you can see, Target, Livefront, Glenn Nelson Center, Workman. Um, we also have SPNN, who's a new sponsor of ours. Thank, shout out to SPNN for the space. This is their studio um, located in St. Paul. Um, and then I would also like to recognize that tonight's um, show is going to be is recorded live. And it's going to be on Channel 19 in St. Paul, if you're living in St. Paul, Minnesota. And then it's also going to be on Facebook Live on the, on the SPNN page. So like the SPNN page, catch us on Facebook Live. And we're also going to be sharing it on our Gravity page as well, too. So, but, okay, so we've been waiting long enough. <laughs> Uh, I know you guys are just ready to hear about Darren's story, so I'm gonna jump right into it. Darren, uh, if you can tell the people, who, who's Darren Levine? Yeah, um, where do we start? Where do we start? The very beginning. Okay, cool. Man. Don't get too graphic, though. Right, don't too graphic, right. <laughs> it was a dark cliff night. <laughs> I fell out. <laughs> Came off. <laughs> No, uh, high level background, um, I started off on in, uh, analytics at a very young age in high school. Used to program for fun, that was weird, but it was uh, how I made my friends and I played a little baseball. Uh, as I got older into college, uh, played college baseball, some of the guys I played with, or one of the guys I played with is here as well, and then uh, went to college to study data science and business management. Ended up dropping out of college basically uh, to uh, run this company and play some baseball. Yeah. yeah. So, so you initially, the the, the the timeline you, from what I remember from a conversation we've had prior, is when you dropped out of college, you were trying to go to the league. Yeah. So that's what your dream was. You're trying to. Well, not my dream, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it was uh, it was so how, uh, so one how, of the dreams. How was right. that? What was that like? Man, it was fun. It was fun, stressful, hard. Uh, so, uh, uh, when I first found out, it was uh, my junior start of my junior year that I had an opportunity to uh, get selected for rookie ball. That was pretty cool, and then. Um, I spent a first day of rookie ball, actually ended up getting hurt. I strained my quad, strained my hammy, so I was out for six weeks. Uh, then I returned back to rookie ball and didn't do so good, but I got, got, did good enough to come back with my speed. Yeah. And then uh, the following year, um, I was down in Clearwater, Florida, and uh, one day I decided, I looked myself in the mirror, I wasn't playing too hot too, I wanna to mention that. Uh, I decided that uh, I just didn't wanna play ball anymore. And uh, I made a lot of friends with baseball, and I, I talked to this guy named Torres, and he had said, you know, a lot of people love baseball and a lot of people don't have cool ideas. You have a cool idea. So I went back to uh, my, my, where I was staying, my host family, packed up my baseball stuff and drove uh, 22 hours straight home uh, to uh, start my company. And that was to launch the company because I already had it kind of planned out. And that was the spring of 2017. Wow. Yeah. So I want to still say a little bit before that because I know there was some there was some steps that went to you actually starting as yeah that. yeah. yeah. Um, so what was the first your first experience kind of dabbling in entrepreneurship and business? Uh, paper route had like fourteen. I know no, 12, 12, okay. 12. Yeah yeah that was the first. That's a classic first entry. Yeah yeah. Mom was like get a job and I was like I don't know about that. <laughs> so I delivered papers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right and then um, you. You were part of something, I think it was 2016, 2017? Yeah, a couple startups, but the, the biggest one um, in, in uh, 2016, I linked up with a guy named Brock. And then uh, I, was telling, I was like, hey, Brock, I'm going to go to baseball uh, for a little bit. And uh, I ended up coming back uh, to actually join him in that startup idea to launch a couple products on the Amazon platform, Etsy, a few other platforms. And how we would launch it was through data. Uh, how we would grow it was through data. How we did everything was a data-driven choice. And that was uh, for the Soro Eclipse. So if you guys aren't familiar, the Soro Eclipse is uh, basically where you watch the moon kind of be in one spot with the sun. Right. Yeah. That was a big deal. It's a big I deal. Remember, I remember seeing Trump looking up at the sky trying to find it. And he didn't have his glasses on. That was kind of dangerous. That's a dangerous topic. Yeah, it's a very dangerous, dangerous topic. topic. We'll skip over that one. <laughs> um, so 
Tell us about, like, what was that experience like? I know you guys got sold a lot of those sunglasses online. Yeah, we, we sold a lot. We sold a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we were uh, in, in traditional retail and online retail. We were number two seller in the country. Oh. Yeah, so that was cool. Yeah. So what did you learn from that experience that helped you kind of position yourself to start as though? I learned a lot about legal, legal, uh, legal counsel and, uh, and how all that happened. Would you like me to go into that? If you want to. I mean, so what, what happened was, what had happened was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we came together and we thought we were going to, you know, make a couple hundred thousand dollars, uh, maybe $300,000 uh, on, it was, and I, I remember it, it was the middle of April and I sat down and I looked at like just forecast projections like with Google Trends, a couple different spreadsheets and a little bit of analytics from the Amazon platform. This is where I first built our analytics strategy based on this. And I was like, holy cow, we actually might hit seven figures. So I, I go to Brock and I was like, hey man, we might make seven figures this year. And he's like, I don't know, man, it's four months away. And I was like, all right, whatever. Um, we actually ended up doing six times that. And um, yeah, six times that in seven months. And uh, I learned a lot because uh, when I had said seven figures, I should have gone to a lawyer and said, hey, let's get a contract in place just in case. And ended up learning a valuable lesson about uh, having uh, a contract in place when you're working with an early stage team. Yeah. yeah. So when you, so after that, you, you figured out how you can move products on Amazon. Amazon, based any, based on any online marketplace in reality, but yeah, Amazon was, well, before that coming in, my background was Amazon, so that was kind of my main role was Amazon, but yeah, we learned a lot. We learned a lot. We knew that data-driven choices make make the make the end result. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I mean, Amazon's blowing up. They're everywhere, right? They're yeah. They're in every business. They're yeah. they're in your grocery stores. Yeah. And, you know, they're in your Absolutely. mailbox. They're everywhere. Absolutely. Um, how do you tackle that whole entire space? And what what made you what made you so curious to really go into that? that <laughs> spreadsheets. Called a black hole. <laughs> you like spreadsheets? Yeah, right? spreadsheets. Data yeah, data guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it was uh, back in college in, uh, in 2015 is really where it stemmed. We had a really cool project where we were comparing contrasting traditional retail with online retail. And the goal was to use traditional retail to drive, oh no, online retail to drive traditional retail. Which, first off, that's stupid. I was like, why would we use traditional retail, online retail to drive traditional retail? Why won't we just do the exact opposite? So my entire like, project was arguing with the professor on why this didn't work and how we should use this. And ASDO came out of that. The idea of ASDO came out of that in reality. So, yeah. you, you put it in your back pocket because it yeah. didn't so much later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at what point after the Solar Eclipse business, um, you were like, I'm ready to do ASDO? It was during. It was during. Okay. So part of, this, part of the first start, the second startup was basically for me to uh, launch ASDO in a quick way. And what are the early, what are the early periods of ASDO look like? Uh, my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In my bedroom, uh, every wall had a notebook paper with just a bunch of, if you looked, if you have, some of my friends aren't here, but they would go into my room and it looked like a spider web. I made people sign NDAs before you came into my room. Uh, I had so you NDAs. learned your lesson. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, during that, I was like, okay, we don't have a contract in place, but for ASDO, we're going to do it right. right. So uh, you actually gave that advice to someone else earlier, a lawyer, an accountant right yeah. away. Yeah. Didn't have the accountant, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now you know. Yeah, yeah. Now Make you sure know. You're having a lawyer and accountant right, right away before you start a startup. Yeah. Um, so your room looks like a spider web. Um, you got all these ideas on the wall. You're trying to organize everything, all the thoughts that's in your head, all yeah. the data that you're thinking about. And like you, you get to the point where it's like, okay, now we need to start getting clients. Yeah. How, yeah. What do you? What does that look like? How do well, you start acquiring clients? Yeah. And in all honesty, the goal right away was to build a software. And I was like, we're going to build this software and we're just going to onboard a bunch of beta users. And like, as I'm on my Gantt chart on my wall, I'm like, well, wait, how do you build this software? And who do I, <laughs> like, so I was like, okay, we're going to break down everything we need to do in order to build the software. And then um, in school, I learned how to do a function analysis, which basically is like, how many manual steps are to this process and can you automate this process? Mm -hmm. So part of my wall was like my functional analysis. And then like the next year, I was going to test the thesis. And then uh, I was like, I'd already had a small group of clients for like, you know, a few hundred dollars a month. Uh, during that summer, I made it a goal to switch on uh, to uh, big ticket clients. And uh, yeah, it was cool. The first month of uh, canvassing for clients, we had 27 people on the pipeline, uh, closed zero of them. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah. that's, that's all part of the process, right? Yeah, you my, my contracts had the yearly price instead of monthly price. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, so for the people at home who aren't familiar, um, 
tell to, now that you, they kind of know how you the journey you took to start your business. Yeah. Can you just explain a little bit about what your business model is? Absolutely. And like Absolutely. Exactly. How do you make money? <laughs> yeah. How do you help other people make money? These yeah. brands that are selling on Amazon and why you decided to do it in the way you did it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So if you're not familiar with as, oh, it's, actually, it's actually an acronym. It stands for Sellers Daily Amazon Life. Uh, we, we have a culture here at Asdale that we'll talk about more later. In the grand scheme of things, we bridge the gap between traditional retail and marketplace retail. So we like to use a comparison of like just a uh, traditional mall like the Mall of America. When you look at the Mall of America, it's roughly you know, 520 stores, 16 employees per store. Uh, just a very big problem in the Mall of America and how you conduct a brand. So let's take Aquafina, let's take Nike, a brand like that. How you run a store in the Mall of America is no different than how you run it in an online mall. Most people refer to online malls as marketplaces, right? So our job at Asdale is to show a brand how they can manage their jobs on a day-to-day -day basis, month-to-month -month basis, on marketplaces like Amazon.com and in the future Walmart.com, and then after that, who knows? And how we do that is through a really cool software called Grit. Now, Grit comprises of a few different dashboards. Uh, we also have a hands-on service dashboard as well, uh, hands-on service as well, and how we implement it ourselves. Uh, in our software, basically, there's several different tools that allow customer service, marketing, analytics, logistics, Excel tracking, et cetera. Yeah. So I always like to say, thank you for that, by the yeah. way. Um, uh -huh. That really helps bring some context to the whole situation. Uh, but I like to always say that the best businesses solve problems. So what was the biggest problem that you were solving when you created Asdo for these brands? Like why, yeah. why did Asdo need to exist in the marketplace in the first place? Yeah, so when you just look at the market from a whole at retail, right now it's at 86% uh, traditional retail, 14% online retail. So it's a baby. It's very, very new. Everyone thinks online retail is booming. It's been around for a while. It's been around for about 12 years. It's still really, really new. Uh, so the current problem is that a lot of brands don't actually offer products of themselves on the marketplace. It's resellers, it's uh, people who are distributors, maybe look-alike products that are you know, counterfeit products, et cetera. So, and the reason why they're not doing it is because there's no proper infrastructure for brands to conduct proper management and engage in sales. So that's the problem we're solving. We said, is there a way that we can do it for these brands? The first model was, okay, let's just call these brands and say, you know what, we know what we're doing, hire us as your outsourced team. Uh, the, the proven model that we're going to grow into is basically, hey, use our software, use our infrastructure, basically, and you're going to receive the same benefits as if we were doing it ourselves. So when you guys started as though, you guys didn't have, your software still hasn't launched yet, so you guys yeah. have been really just building it, right? Yeah. But simultaneously, you've had clients as well, too. Yeah. So you've been working with these brands. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about some of the brands you've worked with and what that's looked like, too? Yeah, my favorite brand that we've worked with is called Skybound USA. We get a lot of free products. They never gave us a free product. Uh, <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> I hope they're watching. <laughs> uh, the, we exited with them uh, in uh, January, or January of this last year, or December, and they sell trampolines. Uh, they're a really good company based out of California. Um, and basically, we work with niche name brands. So if you work out, there's a company called Performa that has Marvel shakers. If you're a golf person, there's a company that we work with called Next Spout. If you're in cosmetics and perfume, there's a company called Clean Perfume. Uh, if we work with companies like Chow's. We work with um, companies like Swissco, which is a daily, uh, daily consumer goods company. Um, we've worked with some big name companies before. We just signed an LOI with L'Oreal in uh, Toronto, so we're hoping to work with them in the future as well. But um, we work with niche brands who offer kind of a you know strict amount of uh, products in their assortment. Yeah, and and you guys were you, you and your team were doing that all manually. manually, right? Yeah. So what's that? What was that like? And how many <laughs> how many steps did it take to really? teach people to learn Amazon. 680. 680 uh, steps, okay. So, yeah, I won't go into <laughs> that, but basically, yeah, it was really stressful. It was hard, cool, but fun. Um, Brady over there started off since day one. We've had to let go of four people only in the history of the company, so a really strong company culture. And um, part of the process last year was having Brady and Easton come down to the same office, this dirty warehouse office. There's water coming from the ceilings. Uh, it was actually kind of fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Made you hustle more. But um, basically, really documenting everything that we had in the company. Easton had an idea. He's like, let's just do SOPs. Right? I think that was the best people thing. people that don't know. Standard SOP? operating procedures. Okay. Right? Let's document everything. So week after week, we just made goals to do that. Uh, sometimes monthly, sometimes biweekly, and we come back to that. I think knowing all the steps behind our, 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 our software really helped us jumpstart our software because we let go of our first dev team and then in July hired our senior programmer. Nice. Yeah. And and what was, so being a small company with not a lot of money 
and trying to we didn't even talk about that yeah. right but yeah. trying to like build a software for a platform like amazon yeah how do you get creative and leverage resources what are some of the things that you did to to get position cash yourself? game is fun to play yeah 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 so we if you guys are not familiar we bootstrapped our entire company until recently when uh sam facilitated a nice convertible note for us uh and then we just yeah um First off, really kn knowing your budget, that's the number one thing. Uh, every month, um, I, I know Easton and Brady remember, but every month I had to make sure, you know, what's our budget look like? What's it going? What's our recurring revenue? What are our fees? Um, and that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is planning out anything you want to do by the quarter. Mm -hmm. I used to plan out by the year in 2017. That did not work. Mm -hmm. uh, we were under budget by, by far. So in 2018, my goal was to plan out everything by the quarter and then um, going forward from there. Nice. Yeah. So, um I want to dive a little bit more into now that you know you you got your you you've been very good at planning out your budget and figuring out how you're going to be bringing people on for specific tasks yeah. and, le and leveraging some resources. So um, let's talk a little bit about your dev team. Dev team, yeah, yeah. Kent, if you're watching, man, I hope Nebraska sucks because you're not here. <laughs> He's in Nebraska. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so Kent, uh, Kent Darnepo or Darmapo, same right? Da Ripple, oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Da Ripple is our senior programmer. He's been here since um, for about almost two years. Um, we had a previous CTO, uh, Alec Hill, really good guy. Just didn't work out, and uh, we had a, a big, uh, actually a bigger dev team do, do, do we, than we do now, about six. And uh, keeping your dev team small early on is the best choice. A lot of people will ramp up on development. We learned the hard way that that's the wrong thing to do. So we actually scaled down. And then I hired a senior programmer uh, by the name of Shah Shalim. And uh, he had, comes with 15 years experience. He's got two, two kids, or no, excuse me, one, one kid. Uh, very nice guy, and he has just been stellar with our development. And then occasionally we'll add on a, a part-time contractor here and there when we need to. I, for one, have hired just a couple people on the security side of things to make sure that I'm doing the right thing from AWS standpoint where we host our code. And uh, you know, yeah, it's really cool. Nice. Yeah. So it sounds like, I mean, you, You've done a good job of being able to really source out talent, right? I mean, having an eye for talent and people who can fit how you yeah. want your team to go. So, how did you get? Where did that skill come from? Like, how did you? <laughs> how did you develop that? It's ability? all fake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. In all honesty, I'm, I'm not sure. I think we got uh, a little lucky. Uh, some of the guys, like uh, Easton, still reached out. Uh, Levi uh, was in town one day, and I, he was trying to pitch me on a company idea, and I was like, well. I don't know about that, but <laughs> hey, I got an idea for you. Yeah. Uh, Louis came from Levi, Brady, just can't get rid of him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so slowly but surely, uh, just um, really letting the guys know that we, we care about you and uh, also being mean too is good, you know, not too mean, but a good balance. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I right now, I'm looking for talent in various different ways. So we start with culture first. So we have a, I like to say we have a unique culture at our company. It's very humorous, it's very outgoing, it's uh, also introverted sometimes as well. It's very like, you know, no excuses go, just do the job. Uh, we fail a lot, uh, so we live by a code, 70-30, uh, so 70% failure, 30% success. Um, and also we live by like, just hold the rope and don't look back, because the next guy's got you, yeah. right? So no one really has to think twice, and when someone messes up, uh, well, everyone holds each other accountable, so right. yeah. I like, the, I like the mentality around the failure piece. I, I, talk about failure all the time, like, yeah. especially living the life of an entrepreneur and a life in startup life, you're going to fail a lot. Right? Yeah. And how do you, how have you dealt with that? What are some of the things you've done to really... You, know, you want the truth? I mean, yeah, I like to scream outside. <laughs> Why? You know, that's the first thing I do. When I'm excited, I like to run back and forth. You guys know that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I don't look at failure as a bad thing. I think if we're... Uh, it's kind of fun, you know, like it's, it's kind of fun. It's like, you got to figure this problem out. And if you don't figure this problem out, everything's screwed. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think I saw it for the first time, um, not for the first time, but really, really quickly for the first time, about two weeks ago, we were building our market research mock-up and uh, we were trying to figure out a baseline formula. I couldn't figure it out. And I, I, st I, was, doing it, I was doing this for like two weeks prior to that. So I just messaged Easton and Kent and I was like, hey guys, can you help me on something? You know, I've been failing over and over and over. And then um, when the group came together, you know, by nature, things start to happen quicker. About two hours, you figure out something that was really, really cool. Right? So I think persistence is the number one. Yeah. Persistence and positivity and not being afraid to show your emotion. Because right. when you show your emotion, people are like, okay, let me help this guy. Right. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Um, so 
T talk a little bit more about the company culture. Yeah. I know this is something that you're really passionate about. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's, can you take us like, what does a day in the life at, in the ASDA office look like? It's a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with me messaging Levi about some, 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 some crazy, I don't know what, or some story to anybody. We always start with a story. I, I feel like it's an unspoken rule. If you don't walk in the office with some kind of story to tell, don't talk for the first hour. <laughs> right? Like that's, it's kind of like how it goes. So that's the first thing is just like, you know, really easing into the day. Um, it's also extremely fast paced. Mm -hmm. So for one hour it might be really, or two hours it might be really calm, and then it goes quick, really, really fast, right? So we have what's called deep focus, uh, where you just zone in for about an hour to two hours to four hours, and it's on uninterrupted work. So uh, there's psychology behind how you do deep focus once, once you turn off your phone and you just cleanse out, you know, cleanse out anything that's outside of just your current focus, you work twice as fast. Right, it's a proven fact, like don't argue about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't, don't argue, it's a, it's, a, it's a fact. All right. All right, and then um, also just uh, really being open to ideas and possibilities is number, is probably that, it's probably huge for us. And then just uh, grit, grit, gotta have grit. If you can't hustle, don't come. Mm. You know, stay home, because I'll freak out. <laughs> Good, I like that. So, uh, <laughs> okay, Yeah. so, Let's talk a little bit about Grit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Grit's coming up. When, when is the anticipated launch date? We'll do a soft launch and, uh, in late July, early August. We'll do a hard launch in September, September uh, the first week of, the second week of September. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the 14th, yeah. So, and, and I know you mentioned a little bit about what it stands, if you can rehash what it stands for again and what, what, what the program actually is gonna do yeah. and how it's gonna help people. It's all word games in our company. Uh, Grit is an acronym too. It stands for Glide, Revenue, Insight, and Tenacity. Uh, and each dashboard serves a different purpose. Glide is for project management, reporting, goal setting, insights for analytics, revenues for anything to do with revenue, money, loss for damages, ref refunds, accounting, and tenacity is like, dude, just automate all of that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so tedious workflows. Good. Yeah. So it's really a workflow platform for... It's a, it's a marketplace ERP, ERP tool in a sense. We, we determine like it's more of an ERP tool than, you know, like a reporting tool because it encompasses everything that you would need in a, you know, traditional business, but just for the marketplace. And currently, who would you say some of your competitors are in that space? Or if there, is there anything like that uh, out savage. there? Savage. Savage. Competitors. Since this is live, I'll name three. <laughs> okay. Celix. I like what Celix did. I really do. But you guys messed up in a big way. Helium 10 is uh, for resellers. They are probably the most... Uh, most well-known in the space. Outside of that, there's Seller Labs. Seller Labs is cool, but uh, they're uh, a little far behind. They're, are they doing, they're doing similar types of stuff? Similar types of software. I won't go into what's the number one way that de deciphers us from them, mm -hmm. but um, light years apart. Got it. Light years apart. Okay. Yeah. So um, going into, as you're getting ready to launch the software, I know you got to raise some money to, to, to for, the pro, for the product to come out. Yeah. How's that journey been as far as going around and pitching? I know you guys were at a couple of the conferences earlier this year. You yeah, were yeah. out in, um, was it Startup Grind out in California? Yeah, you yeah, were yeah. in Collision in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about those experiences. First year we got into, so a little backstory on the startup life. We thought, I thought personally that you needed to make money in order to get investment. So initially I was like, we'll build a service model first. So in 2018, we got it. We received an invite from Startup Gun Global. If you're not familiar, that's the number one um, startup environment uh, for early stage companies. They primarily have ideas. They haven't generated revenue just yet. They select the most promising startups of that year in different categories, right? Um, so we got invited down. We we flew down there. It's very expensive. It's very mad half the time, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And um, we looked around and we realized, holy cow, some of these guys aren't even as far as we are. And that was in 2018. Uh, we went back in 2019 and realized, okay, cool, we can graduate next year. Uh, so that was really cool. We also pitched at BitCon, um, Blacks and Tech's National Tech Conference. That was really cool. We should have won that tech conference. And everywhere I go, I will continue to say that. <laughs> yeah, we should have won. And uh, we, we came in second there. That was really fun. Uh, we pitched at Pitch Globally, which is a local Silicon Valley pitch competition. Mm -hmm. um, that was an interesting experience. We pretty much won that one. How, how was pitching? I, I know, like when we first met, you were you were still kind of figuring out how to how to pitch your business. Yeah, it was a mess. What is that? <laughs> what? How did? How does that been going for you? I know you did Founders Live was your first one that you did, right? Uh, no, we practiced at One Million Cups as a true, true first That's one. Right. Okay. Yeah, and then Founders Live that was the first like competition, because um, One Million Cups is not really a competition; it's mm -hmm. more of a pitch. It's more of a demo. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, how is the competition or how is well, the, how is just, the tweaking? How is just going through and tweaking your message yeah. and pitching and everything? What's it's like a sport. Like? It's like a sport. Right. You gave that advice. But um, basically, you know, if you're playing a sport or trying to perfect an instrument, you record yourself and listen to it over and over and over. Mm. So everywhere we went, um, we tried so hard to record, record me. And then um, I typically will write the speech um, a day before, a couple days before, and then write it a few hours before or an hour before and rehearse it. Um, recently, I've just stopped doing that and just give speeches. Um, but yeah, I think it's just repetition. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and as you're getting ready for this launch in the fall, yeah. Um, what are some of the things that you guys are doing to to prepare for that? Meditation would be nice. <laughs> uh, sleep would be nice. Yeah. Uh, not sleeping is one of them, right? Some of y'all. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're doing a lot, man. Uh, we recently linked up with a company called uh, Citizen, uh, Marble Citizens. They have a venture side, too. Uh, recently started raising bridge capital as well to get us to the end of summer outside of the big, uh, the big possibility that, of, of our check coming. And uh, we've also recently, I've recently started planning on our staffing plan, what that looks like at scale. Uh, really uh, immersing myself in uh, legal help with uh, side by side with you, building our board out more, uh, more in depth. Uh, looking at when I go out and meet people, looking at from a high level, like could this person work with me? Just because like talent's a necessity, you gotta have a pipeline. Um, also, uh, learning a ton. Um, I like plan into my nights during the week to to learn. So that's uh, I learn a lot, but you know that. Mm -hmm. um, and then also ensuring that these guys are streamlining their departments, really stepping away more so than uh, being involved. Uh, fantastic job across all all sides of things. Really cool. Our account management is streamlined. Our business development is becoming more streamlined, and uh, we're on the on the path for sales to become more streamlined too. Uh, dev development is streamlined. Uh, the company, in, in a sense, runs itself in a lot of ways. So we've been working really hard on that. We implement what's called objective key results. So this stands for OKRs, um, and essentially that helps us keep track of where we at. We do weekly uh, Fridays. We do weekly standups, um, and it just lets us know what's going on and. Uh, we might figure out one or two things during that, that stand-up that we didn't know about that week, so we need to figure out how to go. Ever since implementing, if there's anyone who's part of a startup here, look up what an OKR is and implement that. It's the, literally the number one reason we're in business is still, and the reason why we've grown closer is because of OKRs. That's, yeah, so. That's good advice. Yeah, it's cool. So, you, I know you mentioned this a little bit before, but you were very intentional about making sure that as you're building out this business, you're literally documenting everything. <laughs> yeah. I know we've met a couple of times and you had, he's like, I have a document for that. Like, <laughs> your, that was like your number one saying. Like, yeah. if they, I think that would go on your tombstone. You know, it's like, I have a document for that. There's like, not a doc, get a doc. <laughs> they, so some people will try and come up to me like, hey, Darren, check this out. Don't, don't, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Send me a doc. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> I like documents. Yeah. I like to print off stuff. I like to read it once. And uh, so a lot of the guys know to print off something and hand it to me or send me a link. Um, it, the reason why is because if, if you're, in my opinion, if you're building something new or if you're learning something new, uh, the way I learn personally is just to write it down and review it and review it and then build a system around it. So that's the main reason why I like documenting everything. Uh, number two, I just don't think if we're going to build a company, there's, we're not just building an app. We're not just building an idea. We're doing something that's yet to be done, and we're enterprising an entire industry, which comes with an incredible amount of responsibility. So not only do we need to have a fact behind it, but we need to have a good process of what we did to get there. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's so much stress, but if we have a document behind it, and we're like, okay, I forgot how to do this. We can check it. Yeah. yeah. Right, so uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, guys, if you guys are following along at home or in the audience, make sure if you, if you want to tweet about the event tonight, you can tweet it with the hashtag Gravity Live because it's some very great knowledge that Darren's dropping, so make sure you share <laughs> um, yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, your... Okay, I know what I want to talk about. So... I don't know if I like that. As you... Let's go back a little bit. Um, when you first, when you first started as though, yeah. Um, how, how did you? At what point when you told your family that you were gonna? That was they you weren't gonna too play happy. baseball anymore. You weren't gonna finish school. You're gonna focus on your startup. Like, how did you have that conversation? I'll do you a solid. I'll go back a little further. <laughs> so when we found out that I was gonna uh, leave school on campus to play baseball, my mom was like, "Okay, you got to go to Israel and study Hebrew for like one semester." And I was like. Bet. We can agree on this. What I didn't tell them is I was going to actually drop out of college that summer to do baseball and run my company. So that was the first part where I ran into a little bit of a problem with my parents. 
And then that summer um, in, in 2016, um, I had a couple internships and then I uh, ended up quitting all my internships uh, in, the, in the winter. And then... Um, Where are some of the places you interned at? Target, Target headquarters downtown. Doing what? Data science. Makes and, sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really do much, but like, that's part of the reason why I didn't like it. <laughs> and then uh, I was uh, working at Harbor Cafe in their uh, uh, digital marketing department as their assistant. Built a really cool program actually there. Nice. I appreciated them. They listened. And then um, and they let me learn too. And then um, so, so in 2016, uh, I was playing baseball and basically just trying to build Asdale. Uh, I texted my mom, hey, I don't think school is working out. She called right away. <laughs> and that was uh, the, first, uh, the first time I decided to, to uh, basically quit school. I actually ended up walking that year too. I finessed my way to uh, convince my guidance counselor to let me walk a year early because I wasn't going to be on campus the next year. My excuse was, I have this startup and I play baseball. There's no way I'm going to be able to walk next spring. And she's like, okay, I understand that. Yeah, so. You, you finessed that whole situation. Well, I got the pictures, it's all that matters, right? <laughs> <laughs> so your mom was happy with that. Yeah, she was not happy, that was not cool. And then uh, in the fall of 27, or 20, uh, 2017, they're like, so you're gonna go back to school? And I was like, I think I'm gonna just do this startup idea real quick. <laughs> and then um, in, the, uh, in the winter of 20, uh, 2017, my mom started to actually um, come along, one of the parents started to come along and then um, my other mom was like not down for it. She's like, you're gonna go back to school. And then, uh, God, I can't say this, like, I'm gonna say it, but like, so <laughs> one of my parents and me put money together into Asdale and kept it away from my other parents. I hope, I, wanna, I hope both of them are not watching. <laughs> we haven't told her just yet. She'll find out at some point. Well, she's found out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid her back most of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, that allowed me to build out a bigger team. And then um, that was really, really cool. It was, uh, it was great. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully she's not watching. <laughs> I just started some. I might get a text. <laughs> oh, there it is, right there. Right. She didn't get a text. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, so, so now your family's supporting you, obviously. And yeah. You, and you, yeah. They're, they're very. I'm sure they're very proud of everything that you've been able to accomplish so far. Let's hope. And you know, sometimes it's hard though because startup life is a whole different beast, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to explain to people from the outside looking in. Yeah. Um, they just kind of see the posts online. And yeah. The quotes and. You know, the tires looking self. They see the flexes, like that, you know, right? that's it. They don't see the hard work. They don't see everything behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So what, would, what are some of the things that you do to get by every day? Like, what are some books that you read, some people that you keep in your circle, mentors you have, things like that? Yeah, yeah. Last year, I didn't talk to anybody. Um, and that was the biggest mistake ever. And I uh, got really sick. You put your head down and just yeah, kept working. It helped. It helped. Don't get me wrong. It helped. But I got, I got really sick last year. And uh, so, so what I'm doing now, I, I learned from that. What I'm doing now is uh, uh, every two weeks, I'll hang out with friends. Just uh, doesn't matter what it is, just I'll hang out with them. Recently, it's been every weekend, which is totally cool. Uh, <laughs> but that's because we're, we're in a slow phase. Um, but every two weeks, I'll make sure I'm around friends. Uh, I've managed to build up a really good mentor network. That was one of my goals in 2017, was to just make sure I have a lot of mentors who I can call and ask questions to. Uh, I block out about four hours uh, out of the week just for me to learn. Um, just at nighttime, I have what's called power down hours. And basically, during that hour, I'll just read a book uh, if, I'm, if I'm home. Sometimes I'm not always home. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, I'm home, I'll, I'll do that. And uh, that just allows me to just like learn something new. If it's a topic that I don't know about, um, I like to just learn all about it. I like to learn in general. If I don't know something, I, I really want to know about it. Um, and then also, I, I, I work out a lot. I go on morning runs. Um, I work out three times a week. Uh, that really helps. And then, uh, you know, sometimes just you got to yell at the top of your lungs. I do that. I listen go on, to music. Listen, listen to music. Yeah. What's that, right? Um, what are some of the books that you've read that have really Favorite you? books. Yeah. Compound Effect. Um, really good, really good book. It's the best book in the world when it comes to, like, multiplying growth with your, within your personal life. I recommend that book to anybody. Uh, that's really cool from just a personal development book. Um, Headspace or Headstrong, that's a really good book. Uh, they compare and contrast what it's like to have a, a clear lifestyle compared to a jumbo, you know, lifestyle and how they do it, which with brain science. Right? It's like funnily awesome. They just break down basically all the food you consume and they compare and contrast it with like coffee and uh, the science behind what kind of coffee you should be drinking to jumpstart your life. And I've learned basically through that, not exactly all they recommend because I disagree with some of it. Uh, I've learned basically how to increase my productivity within certain situations, how to become more aware within certain situations. And it sounds weird when people say that, but it's actually possible. 
Um, and then another really good book that I just like is just the, um, the Startup Life of a, of a Founder. That's a really good book if you're a founder. It's just, uh, it just takes you through a roller coaster and it's just like, um, it's humbling because it's like, this is exactly what's supposed to happen. And you don't really believe it until you go through it, but it just reminds you to just like be okay. And the last book I recommend is The Upside of Stress. I think a lot of people forget that stress is actually good in a sense. It makes you, I mean, when you have a deadline, like how many people have wrote papers the day before, right? It's because you're stressed and you got to get through it. The day before, the day of. The day of, right, honestly, honestly. <laughs> right, honestly, the, the creativity that you get from that is unreal. And then um, you, when you're stressed and hungry and you just got to figure something out, your, the human nature, the habit that comes from that is to just figure it out. Because mm. the end goal is, is happiness and, you know. Survival of the Exactly. Right. right. So that's like, there's such good facts of stress. It's like the fight or flight. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. That whole and some people will just quit because they get too stressed, but imagine if you didn't quit. Yeah. You know? That's a good point. Yeah. So um, how would you say, so what advice would you give to, you get a lot of advice tonight, <laughs> like, clearly, but what's some of the, if you, what would advice would you give to 2016, Darren. No. Oh, uh, don't sign that contract. <laughs> <laughs> First thing, uh, drop out. Drop out sooner instead of that summer. Um, uh, and then, that's honestly it. I feel like uh, don't date. I would have just been more focused too. And then um, don't take that internship. But in all honesty, that the Target internship really helped me learn about touch bases. So yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't think I'd give myself really too much different advice besides maybe not take that contract, mm -hmm. right? Like, it was, it was pretty straightforward, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, is there anything that you would like to cover as far as, when well, I know you wanted to Yeah, do, we uh, gotta introduce the guys. Like, without the guys, we wouldn't be here. So at some point, we gotta do that. All right, we can do that yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Levi, come up here. <laughs> Louis, Caleb, Easton, Brady. Yeah, y'all gotta come up here. All right, there we go. So there's a there's a mic down there you guys can pick up. <laughs> One of y'all need to talk first. Oh, uh, it's not even on. That sucks. You can use my uh, jacket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we can just like go over what they do. Yeah, you can go ahead and just introduce each oh, yeah. person what the role is. Over there is Caleb. He's uh, head of our marketing. Caleb uh, was introduced to me randomly, and then he was cool. <laughs> I was like, you're not crazy. This is gonna work. Uh, Louis Carlos, probably the coolest guy on the ASDO team, just because, you know, Louis Carlos <laughs> from Monterey, California. He does our business development. Levi Stroder, the fourth, uh, <laughs> is on our sales team. And then uh, Brady's been here with me since day one, as well as Easton, and they uh, basically stream on the company. So without these guys, like, I give a lot of, and Kent, where you at? Oh, freaking Nebraska. <laughs> Kent, <laughs> Kent's in Nebraska, Shashalim somewhere else in the world. And then we have a few other people as well on the team. These, these guys are like the main guys who, uh, you know, keep everything going and us sane. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to say congratulations to you on building a strong team yeah. and look forward to seeing your success and the product launching in September. Yeah. Keep a lookout for Grit. If you are a brand that's looking to optimize how you sell on Amazon, Look and Walmart Amazon. in the future. And Walmart in the future. If you don't have an infrastructure, call us. If you don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> they will call you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, I guess that's all I have for you. Yeah. I wanted to, I guess we have some, how much time we got? We got some time. I know Bianca's probably going to hate me right got now. Eight minutes. 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's do so it. do we have any questions in the audience? That's Anybody have any questions? Oh, yes. We got a question back here. Can you state your name, please, sir? I'm Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey. Hey, give Dave a round of applause for asking the first question on Gravity Live. There we yeah, go. Hey. <laughs> you have to keep saying uh, I was, um, you were okay. saying at the beginning of your startup, you scaled your um, technical team um, more than um, you should have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I built, all our, built all of our frameworks. Before I scaled our technical team, we had no frameworks in place. We had no roadmap. We had basically everything documented on paper with what we want done. Part of the process when you're paying for development is research. So a lot of people will go into development and saying, I want this idea built, but they have really no clear path to it. So we wasted a, quite a bit of money of basically our own money on that, and it just didn't work. So when I scaled down our dev team, the first thing I did is I looked up every requirement that we needed in order to build our software from the feed files and the back end API references, and I learned how to read APIs. 
right? And then the second thing I did is I built the framework on how it's supposed to be built, what it's supposed to look like, then I built the documentation behind that and what to do. So if you have all of that done, or you have a clear, concise plan of action on how to move forward, hell yeah, scale your dev team. But if not, don't do it. You're gonna waste so much money. Yeah. We got a question back here. Brent. Um, Should we have a round of applause for Brent? Yeah, Brent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets a round of applause on Gravity Live. Louis, yeah. Uh, two words, control, chaos. Yes! <laughs> That's so true. It's control, it's fun, it's fun and, and engaging, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are having fun, right? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like, dive, dive deeper into that. What are the skills and characteristics of an employee that you're looking for? What, what will make a good teammate in the future for Asdell? Yeah, That's a, good That's a really good question. Uh, the exactly. first thing we look for is like, are you just relaxed? Right, like uh, I think just composure is huge when you're in this kind of industry or this kind of company because one moment everything goes to shit. Oh, wasn't supposed to. I'm sorry. It's all good. We'll, we'll edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Ninety percent, ninety-nine percent success rate right there. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I, I'll go down to ninety-seven. No, it's all good. Uh, uh, yeah. So composure is huge for us. If if you don't, if you can't just keep calm and just like figure out how to proceed through, that's hard, right? Uh, and number two is like, can you have fun? You know, like, can you have fun like with just anything? Um, I, for one, think everything's a game. So like, I like to just have fun and lay back, but then like everything, yeah, we know. <laughs> and then at the same but time- You're very competitive, so when it's a game, you would- I like to win. Yeah, be ready to win. Yeah, 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 I like to lose. And then um, uh, at the same time, within a, within, a, within a flip, it's gotta get really serious, right? So are you able to just, you know, be, you know, dynamic? Um, and then also like, Trusting, um, we just assume that the job is done in each, each team, and when it's not, it's very frustrating. Very rarely does that happen, um, so you just gotta be able to focus. Uh, that's why we do deep focus, and if you don't do deep focus, uh, then just get the job done, and you know, that's what we look for. So we just look for a little, I personally will look for little things like that in the conversation when I'm having somebody, and then when I notice right away their kind of mentality, I, I like to figure out a different way I can help them, and then, uh, you know, and then figure out if they wanna learn more about ASDO. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, up front. Uh, Your name, please. Should we give a round of applause yes, to you? Yes, give a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your name? Becca. Becca. As a business owner, how do you manage your risk versus like your money management and moving forward? It's all risk. It's just. It's just. It's all risk. It's all a game. Uh, honestly, uh, I don't look at anything that we do as a risk. It's. Um, I just, I'm, I'm one to believe if we have a plan behind it and we're just gonna follow it through to the end. We might fail, we, and we failed a lot. We failed in our first sales campaign that was major, right? So I don't look at anything that we're gonna do as risk. If we're gonna move forward, it's a calculated bet, it's a calculated, it's a calculated risk in a sense, right? So the first thing I do is like, how much is it gonna cost, obviously. Then I look at the cost benefit behind it. If this works, what happens? Then I look at the P&L. How much are we gonna lose and can we save ourselves? And that's all I do, in all honesty, yeah. Anybody else, any other questions? Going once, <laughs> going twice. All right, so that's it. I mean, that's all I got. Yeah, that was right on the spot. Oh, yeah. What time was it? Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, it was good, it was good. Yeah. Very okay. well done, thank you. very well done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so thank you so much for joining us on our first edition of Gravity Live. This has been Sam Medelli with Darren Levine of Asdell and the Asdell team. Um, we are gonna be back at some point in the future, we don't know yet. We don't know if we got canceled or not. Before, but <laughs> we'll find out, right? Did you, how did you guys like the show? Did you like the show? Yeah, That's it. yeah great. Thank you again to SPNN for hosting us tonight. Thank you for um, all of our sponsors again. And if you want to see the show again, or if you want to see, um, if you want to share with your team or your, or your friends or family, whatever, you can follow us on Facebook at Gravity. Um, you can follow Asdell on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Asdell at A S D A L I N C. You can uh, on Instagram, all that. LinkedIn. Everything, yeah, yeah. And then you can also follow the SPNN page on Facebook and SPN Community on Instagram and and uh, and Twitter. So, all right, that's all I got. Have a awesome. great evening.